Welcome to Foffer AI, the channel where we explore the world of artificial intelligence and its latest tools and techniques. In this channel, we'll dive deep into AI tools like Midjourney, Stable Diffusion, and ChatGPT, giving you tips, tricks, prompts, and workflows to get the most from these tools. In this first video, we'll take a look at ControlNet, a neural network structure that lets you control diffusion models by adding extra conditions and guide you through the different models available. We'll show you how to use these AI tools to create stunning AI-generated art. Let's get started. So there's been a lot of interest in this new thing called ControlNet, which is now available with stable diffusion and automatic 1111, and it's showing up in all sorts of other tools. So I thought I would create a video that shares a lot of the stuff that I've already learned about ControlNet, all of the different models that are available, and how to use them. So let's go through each of the different preprocessors and models that you get with ControlNet. I'm going to start with this uh, room picture. This is a mid-journey generation, and I've got a prompt that should change the image quite substantially. So we've got this sort of Japanese kind of tea room, living room, and we're going to try and change it into a sort of cyberpunk cafe. We're going to change the light to something that's sort of dawn light, warm tones, morning scene uh, with windows. Uh, we're going to use the same seed for every render and this is all going to be generated using the deliberate model which is based on stable diffusion 1.5. We're going to take two images through each of the control net models. We've seen the first one which is the Japanese living room. The second one is this cyberpunk couple that are embracing. Again, we're going to choose a prompt that tries to change this image as much as possible. So we've got a portrait photo of a 30-something couple, so an older couple, summer clothes, color photo, 50 mil prime Canon studio portrait. So we're going to try and move from a, a painting to a photo. And we're going to use negative prompts to try and prevent any of those um, sort of arty painting type outputs that we don't want. Again, we're going to use the fixed seed for all the generations, and we're using the deliberate model. So the first control net model that I'm going to take you through is the canny model and the canny preprocessor. And this is probably one of the models I go to the most, and that's why I'm starting with it. Uh, it's one of my favorites, gives some of the best results, and essentially it is edge detection. So here is our Japanese living room, and we'll put that through a preprocessor, and the output of the preprocessor looks like this. So we can see if I flick back and forwards between these two that we've got all of those edges from the Japanese living room showing. Now, what ControlNet does is when you click your generate button, when you start creating your image through the standard diffusion model using the standard samplers with your prompt, it will guide the generation process based on this pre-processed image to create an output that is guided by this and has these same constraints. So if we look at the image that we get at the result of this, we can see if I flick back and forth that we've got those same edges. We've maintained that essence of what was the original image, but rather than a Japanese living room, we've kind of got this warm cyberpunk cafe, morning scene, there's some nice light coming in. We've kept the plant in the corner, we've got the window on the side, we've got the coffee table in the middle. So I'll just flick back between these a couple of times just so you can see how the pictures changed from the input through the preprocessor to the output. Now let's take a look at our second image, which is our cyberpunk couple, which we're trying to change into a photo. So here we've got our cyberpunk couple on the left. We've got the edge detection in the middle and we can sort of see that it's got the profiles of both of those two uh, characters 
And on the right, we've got our new generation and we can see it's, it's done what we've asked for. We've got the photo, they're 30 something, they're older and they're in summer clothes. We can see that we've got the essence of the original image still coming through in our new output, but the context has completely changed. So we're gonna move on now to HED. HED is another, another form of edge detection. It's kind of fuzzy detection and it's really useful for keeping more of the details of an image. So let's start again. We've got our Japanese living room and this is what the pre-processed image looks like. So if you remember our, our canny edge detection, the edges were really, really sharp here. We're maintaining that detail by having fuzzier edges. And when we go to our output, we get something a bit more like this. So let's flick between these a couple of times. And I think the effect is a lot more clear on our cyberpunk couple. So let's have a look at the cyberpunk couple. Here they are on the left. We've got our fuzzy edge detection in the middle. And on the right, we've got this really detailed photo where a lot of those elements that we kind of lost with the canny edge detection are still there in this HED version. You can see that some parts of the detail it's kind of struggling with. So we've got some strange hair going on here, which is tr it's trying to compensate for this collar. It hasn't given the guy a collar, but it still needs to have this line coming down here. This sort of strange headpiece has become flowers and the tattoos have become hair. So you can see how it's sort of creatively taken those constraints from HED and turned it into an image. Something that's worth saying uh, with HED is it often produces really good paintings. If you want to do photos, uh, you might have to work a bit harder to get the prompt to do what you need. Uh, all of those details that, that come out in the edge detection in that pre-processed version uh, lend itself really well to paintings and art. Now I will typically try the canny edge detection model first and if I'm not getting the results I need, if the edges it's picking out aren't great or I'm losing too much detail, I'll switch over to HED and give that one a try. Next up we've got M-LSD which is another form of edge detection, but it only focuses on straight lines. So here's our Japanese living room. And if we look at the pre-processed image, this is what we've got. We've got the straight lines from the beams and from the pictures, from the coffee table, from the window, but our plant has completely disappeared because our plant doesn't have any straight lines on it. So if we look at our output, we're gonna have something that doesn't have any plant in the right hand side. It's probably gonna put something else there and we need to see what it's gonna do. So here's our output. So we'll just flick between these a couple of times. So there's our original, here's our pre-processed and here's our cyberpunk output. So we've got those two posters, we've got those beams, we've got some down lights, we've got the window on the side and it looks like it's filled that gap by putting in some sort of vending machine and chair. If we take a look at our cyberpunk couple, uh, the results of this one are a little bit odd. Uh, essentially, the input image doesn't have any straight lines except for the collar, maybe a little bit on the arm. So yeah, this is not a good model for this image. There's not enough straight lines and we're really not guiding the output in any way. It's free form and this would be a bad choice. Let's move on to the next uh, model and preprocessor, which is depth. So you've probably already seen that Stable Diffusion and Stability AI, when they released uh, Stable Diffusion 2, uh, it came with a depth to image model. Uh, this is very similar to that. Uh, essentially, we'll be creating a depth map based on our input images and using that to guide the diffusion process. So like before, here's our Japanese living room and here's the depth map. Currently there are two different types of depth map you can choose from. So there's depth and there's depth 
uh, LE Res. And this is the depth LE Res version, which gives a bit more detail in the depth map. You see our input image, and we've got the shape of the plant, shape of the coffee table, the strength of those frames behind is, is a lot less strong than in the other models. So I'm not sure what effect that's gonna have on the output. And we've got a coffee table and the cushions, they're all showing. So let's look at the output. So, well, it's still kept those frames. It's made them neon. We've got our plant. It's kind of completely changed from a green plant to a red plant. Uh, we've got the cushions, we've got our table, and it's made those panels behind into a window. So it's really kept that essence. And we've got the same structure of the image, except now it's more of a cyberpunk cafe. Let's have a look at our cyberpunk couple. So here we go, we've got the couple on the left, we've got the depth map image in the middle, and on the right we've got our new generation. Again, well, we've got that high collar on the couple, it's really struggling to work out what to do there. It's given him a shirt that doesn't have a high collar. Uh, it's put a piece of grass or some, some sort of light there to try and compensate. It kind of works. Uh, but this generation also has sort of some strange hands and artifacts going on. I think if I was going to redo this, I'd probably change the prompt to say no hands in the negative prompt and try and perfect this. Uh, but I've kept the prompt the same for all generations so we can do an easier direct comparison. So can he edge detection, HED edge detection, and depth maps. Those are the three go-to models. I tend to try each of those, see what sort of output I'm getting, and see if I can get the image that I'm after. Next processor and model I'm going to cover is OpenPose. And this essentially allows you to take a human pose or a hand pose from an image and reuse it in another image. So you could have someone standing with arms crossed, use that pose, create a new image of someone completely different, but they'd be standing in the same position with their arms crossed. Obviously our first example here, a Japanese living room, doesn't have any people in it, so we're only gonna look at this one from the perspective of the cyberpunk couple. So here we are, we've got our couple on the left. We've got the open pose annotated result in the middle and we've got our generation on the right. So in the middle, that's the, those color bars are the representation of the pose of our cyberpunk couple. And if I overlay that on top of the image, you can sort of see how it's coming up with that generation. We've got those green lines representing arms, the red ones being shoulders, and then those sort of purple lines representing faces at the top. It's taking one pose and reusing it to create a new image. So if you look at the image on the right, all of the styling, all of the details completely gone. But what we've got is two people sort of standing in roughly the same pose. Uh, this probably isn't the best example, but you can see there their arms are crossed. Uh, her head is on his chest. He's not sort of head to forehead like in the original image, but the gist is there. The next model is Scribble, and Scribble essentially allows you to take a little drawing and turn it into a real thing you can also start with a real image and pre-process it. And there are two ways to pre-process it. One is to assume that your image that you're putting in is a scribble, it's a doodle, and to just convert it into binary channels, which I'll show you. And then there's an alternative, which is fake scribble. So it takes your input image tries to reimagine it as if it had been scribbled and then uses that to guide the diffusion process. So the first one here, so we've got our Japanese living room and this is what happens if we go with the straight up scribble preprocessor. You see it's just converted it into black and white and 
if we use this to generate an image, we get something looking a little like this. So it's not necessarily a bad input. We've got this sort of diagonal line going across the top right, which is only really there in the original image because of the shadow. But that's creating some new elements in our picture. We've still kind of got a central coffee table. We've got some panels to the left. We've got the shape of one of the frames. So some elements are being preserved whilst others are disappearing. Fake Scribble, as I said, lets you take your input image, which is our Japanese living room, and then imagine that you had just sketched that out. So this is what the preprocessor creates. It takes a low fidelity sketch of your input. So we've got some of some detail there from the beams. So these are the beams. We've got this detail, which is in the frame. Haven't really got much of the plant. We've got a cushion, a bit of the table. And as you can imagine, this is probably gonna create an output that is quite different to our original. So let's have a look. So here's our new output of our Cyberpunk Cafe. Those three beams in the middle have stayed and we've lost the frames, but we've kept this sort of squiggle and it's become what looks like some sort of floating drone. Interestingly, the plant has also stayed. It's changed form. It's a bit bigger now, uh, but it's still there. And we've still got these panels on the left as well. Here's our cyberpunk couple. I didn't show you the real skibble version because when converted to straight black and white, it was pretty much all black except the top left corner. Here's the fake scribble. So you can see we've got a rough uh, outline of those two characters. And again, we've kept that collar detail, this straight line here, which is the thing that the, uh, the image generator always struggles with this. And on our right, we've got our new 30 something couple. We've got some plants obscuring uh, this guy, which I think is quite a clever way of, of building that detail in. You can see the ear details come through and the sort of headpiece detail is coming through as well. So with Scribble and Fake Scribble, you kind of, you're at the whim of how the preprocessor interprets your input and that decides what details are gonna get kept. So it's a good one to use if you want to maintain some sort of loose structure, but also if you just want to be sketching, doing real sketches and turning them into images, you can get something that roughly matches your sketch. The next model is segmentation. And segmentation, when you put it through the preprocessor, it breaks down your image into segments or areas. So here is our Japanese living room. And here is how the segmentation preprocessor has broken it down. So we've got the red areas, which are those frames. We've got uh, sort of a light greeny highlight color for the plant. Our cushions are in orange. Our ground area is brown. The panels on the left are white. So when generating, it's going to use these to create different segments in the output. And here's our output. Something that's interesting here is we've completely lost the three vertical beams in the middle. They've been present in most of those outputs until now. Something else that's changed is our image is kind of now a bit more fisheye. It's a bit more wide angle. It's distorted more. We've got a, a slightly different feel going on. We've maintained that plant in the corner and it's quite similar actually. And those frames are still there. So the details that are coming through are different, but the overall feel of the image is quite different. Here we've got our cyberpunk couple, not nearly as many segments, so not as interesting, um, probably not the best model to choose for this type of image. Some interesting points to highlight though, we've got this gap here between the couple. That's coming through in the segmentation. And if we look in our output image, we've got the same gaps appearing. So the last model I want to show you is the normal map model, um, which is a texture mapping technique. I haven't had much success with this model. I suspect it is best for images where you want to preserve 
textures. Uh, but let's have a look at how it works with our inputs. Here's our Japanese living room. When we put this one through the preprocessor, we get a normal map that looks a bit like this. As you can see, we've lost all of that detail, all of that purple space. Uh, we've got no mapping for that area. We've only really captured the immediate foreground, which is the cushions and a bit of the tables. So when we produce uh, an output, we get something very, very different. And we're really only getting the detail from uh, the very front of our input image. That said, I really like this output. It's very grainy. It kind of feels like a still from a, a sort of Blade Runner or a cyberpunk movie. Let's move on quickly to our cyberpunk couple because our normal map here is a lot more detailed. So you can see we've got a really good map here showing the the couple embracing and when we use that to generate an image we're actually getting some really good results you can see the sort of profile of both of them is coming through and the pose is the same and there's a lot of good detail that we're maintaining again we've got this issue with the collar and there's some weird gaps here and strangely here is this a t-shirt or is it a long sleeve shirt um, that said, for this image, the normal map seems to have done a good job. So with the normal map, occasionally, if you haven't been getting the results you wanted from the other models, it's worth giving this one a try. See what it does. See what the um, preprocessor output looks like. If it's giving you a lot of detail, then keep using it and changing your prompt and seeing what you can get. So those are all of the current models and the preprocessors that come with them. It's worth saying that anyone can train their own control net model. So in the future, we're probably going to see a lot more of these. We're going to see new ways to control the diffusion process to create images with a higher degree of control. So it's going to be really exciting to see where control net goes in the next couple of months. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. We've been through all of the models and hopefully now you've got a good understanding of what each of them does and when to use them. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and there'll be more videos coming soon.